Okay, this looks interesting. We've got one vegetable I don't think we've used a lot. Um, what's for dinner? Tonight we're having venison backstraps with a celery root and potato puree. Okay, and what we need for that is uh, some good chicken stock, arrowroot, bacon fat and butter. Bacon fat and butter. Okay. Uh, Tawny port, some heavy whipping cream. Um, these are, we've got a whole uh, large shallot minced very, very finely. Um, one russet potato, which is peeled. And this huge thing, which is a celery root. And we got this at Kroger's. Correct. So this is just a regular grocery shop item. Uh, you should get it at most grocery stores. And the venison is uh, harvested this year. Um, these are bo both uh, loins from a doe. Correct. And uh, we'll get started in just a second. Okay, this is celery root. What are we doing with it? Uh, we are going to trim off all the dirty and, uh, and, and brown bits here that they are fibrous, uh, fibrous and or uh, dirty. So they really need to come off. It's almost impossible to use them. Um, so we, we need to trim them away. They, they also have kind of a funny bitter flavor too. And wow, it really smells like celery, but this isn't the celery that, this isn't the root of the regular celery that you get at the grocery store. It's a close relation to celery. Um, and it's definitely related. You can see it looks a lot like celery. Um, and it's related, but it is not the same. Regular celery does not have a, a root like this. This is essentially bread for a lot of root, not a lot of greens. Gotcha. So, just trimming it off with a knife like that. You could use a vegetable peeler if you like. But it would be a lot harder to do. Well, Because you're taking off lots of, lots of it. Yeah. I mean, this is big slices. I think you'd be working it pretty hard if you had a, a potato slicer and you're trying to do this. Yeah, it's, it's, it'd be more work. Uh, this is faster. If you're comfortable with a, a, a knife, this is going to be faster. If you're not as comfortable with a knife, try a potato peeler. Uh, potato, uh, potato peeler will be just Ooh. fine. <laughs> I want to see how hard this is to cut through. Uh, well, what I'm doing right here now is just taking out these last little fibrous bits because I don't want to waste that much of the celery. And another little nip there. So it's kind of like cleaning a potato and like getting the eyes out and exactly. just cleaning it up. Very, very similar. Okay, and, and what size cubes? Uh, three quarter inch uh, cubes, so we're going to be working with three quarter inch slices. And then we'll turn it same thing going the other direction. They just basically like making small cubes out of potato. Yep. Okay. Very similar. Great. Okay, and so you've basically chopped up the celery root into mm -hmm. these, these big chunks. A little bit smaller than the potatoes, and it's going into boiling water. Same with the, right, right along with the potatoes. And you Salt just added, water. yeah, what? Uh, how much salt? A teaspoon of salt. A teaspoon of salt in. Uh, oh, quarter, quarter two of water. Okay, and that's just going to. Uh... We we'll make sure there's enough water to cover. So it's not that imperative that you get the amount of water right. You just need to have enough to cover. Gotcha. So just once you've added in as much as you want, and this is a ratio of like um, how much celery root to potato. Um, tonight this is about. Two to one celery root to a potato. Uh, I'm okay with one to one. Gotcha. So this is basically uh, low carb. Exactly. Low carb, high high uh, fiber. High fiber, uh, paleo friendly. An amazing, amazing um, match with with the venison. And that's just we're adding filtered water enough to cover. And then we're going to bring this back to a boil. You said uh, about 20 minutes. Should be about 20 minutes. Yeah. Okay. And we'll get the venison started. The potato and the celery root, uh, have, the pieces have been uh, cooking, boiling for 15 minutes. The timer just went off and Mark is now testing to make sure that the knife goes very easily into each of the pieces. Um, the celery root's close. It'll be there by the time we get uh, ready to puree. Okay. And, and you told me just recently that it's really important that the celery root not be hard. Hard. It needs to be very tender because we're going to puree this after all. And if you have, 
you know, pieces. This, I mean, we're trying to add fiber into our diet, and that's a, it's a wonderful thing, but if you're not cooking it as much as it possibly can be cooked, you're going to get something that you're not going to like so much. Now, as much as we're adding fiber to our diet, we're also adding bacon fat. Woohoo! Um, <laughs> so, uh, this is about what? A tablespoon of bacon fat? Uh, roughly, yes. Okay. And this is in a, a pan that's already been heated up. And this is where we're going to start the venison. Now, again, at this point, we have already turned on the, uh, the oven. We've preheated it to 300 because, as always, we're going to finish cooking up. And we're going to finish the meat. In the, the oven, in the warm oven. Yes. Uh, so it can, And then we'll bring it out and let it rest for a little bit. Exactly. And that, at that point, we're going to then uh, finish up the puree. But so... These are just peppered and salted. Nothing else. Just salt and pepper and that's it. And bacon hot fat. pan and bacon fat. Medium, awesome. medium hot. Okay. And now the potatoes can be drained. Okay. The, uh, the venison is uh, starting to cook on one side. That's awesome. And... It's now time to start working on the puree of the celery root and the potatoes. And you just chucked in, it may not be easy to see what you're there doing there. You're adding about what? Two, three tablespoons of uh, unsweetened... Un unsalted butter. And it, actually, I'm sorry. more like uh, two teaspoons. Okay, two teaspoons. I said unsweetened. I meant sweet butter, which means it's unsalted. And now we're going to add our own salt. About a, about a teaspoon? Uh, Salt? Half, half a teaspoon, okay. quarter teaspoon. You can always add more. Right. Always taste. And this is heavy whipping cream? And this is about uh, a cup, maybe a cup and a half of, of heavy whipping cream. And you've turned the flame down lower, yeah. so we're at a lower cooking temperature than boiling, obviously. That was three minutes. Okay. So you're basically cooking the loins for three minutes per side. Exactly. And now I need to turn them. These are small. Bigger loin might take a little bit more time. Uh, four minutes is not inappropriate for a larger loin, but this is a small dough and the loins are small. And this is where we then get our freestanding <laughs> blender or hand hand blender and if you don't have one of these get one they're absolutely awesome uh, amazing how many possible ways that you can use this guy and just keep going until it's and we'll be back in a few. Okay, the uh, venison loins have been cooking on three minutes, uh, cooking on each side. Yep, <laughs> three minutes exactly on each side. And we've, as usual, we've heated up a plate in the microwave a couple minutes because now's the time that the meat needs to rest. But it needs to finish cooking and then it'll rest. <laughs> So we need True. a couple minutes in, in, in the warm oven to let it get, continue to, to cook up and settle. And again, 300 is good to go? Good to go. Okay. Tell me we're doing something with this bacon fat. Yes, next up we're going to add to the shallot that we did. So this was, this was actually like one large shallot. It looked like two kind of cloves, but uh, it, it was a lot of shallot. It's very finely minced. Exactly. Going right into the bacon fat. Still on the same heat, too. So we'll it's, it's low. We'll add a little bit of butter. Just make sure there's enough. And we'll give that a little swirl. It looks like it's browning already, but it's it's just pulling up the... Uh, the fawn. The fawn, thank you. I couldn't think of that for a second. From the venison. So this has got to cook for 
Four or five minutes. Four or five minutes, okay. Got medium heat. Let's finish up the, uh, the puree here. We just need a little bit of salt and pepper and a little more salt and maybe a little bit more pepper. And, and this was blended with a stick blender and, and I just asked, I said, what consistency are you looking for? And you said... Consistent. Consistent consistency. Because realistically what you're looking for is no lumps. Okay, this is the, uh, the shallots and the shallots have been cooking for... About four minutes. Four minutes because we're getting them soft and that's just enough time for the venison to finish cooking. Always, always. Okay, and this is done. And now, I had it wrong before, now begins the resting stage where we're gonna just let it sit. It's gonna reabsorb its juices and it will become awesome very soon. Now, what are you adding now? I'm adding about a half a cup of port wine. Now, I, I asked this again, I asked this earlier, does the port wine, because everyone, when you start talking about wine, people get really freaked out about, you know, what should I use? What should I not use? Should I use uh, good stuff? Should I use bad stuff? Cheap and port. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Cheap port. Now, the rule number one is never use anything in your cooking that you would not drink otherwise. Yeah, this is true. However, most of the cheap ports are pretty well made. Yes. And so, show, show me the bottle of port that we're using. Yeah, this is, this is the port. And this is a $10 bottle of tawny port and it works perfectly for this recipe so sweet and venison go together magically yeah uh, especially the type of berry sweet that you get from from a good port uh, it should be your go-to if you're if you're cooking much venison you should always have some port around you can always do a quick pan sauce with it okay and we have the um the potato celery root mash is done it's pureed, we put the lid on it, and we're, at this point we're just keeping it warm on the burner on low, right next to it. Exactly. Okay. I'm adding some chicken stock here. Okay, this is like two cups of chicken stock. You adding all of that? Uh, no, I'll add some of it. Uh, maybe maybe another half a cup. Um, and I'll probably add a little bit more too, but also, we're gonna want to thicken this sauce a little bit. Yeah, want, oh, yeah. We want a lot of sauce, but we want it thick. So I'm gonna add it to the arrowroot that we had out, and that's about a tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons of arrowroot. Now, the chicken stock, it's not cold. It's cool. It was microwave. It's cool. -ish. So it's, but it's not cold because arrowroot has a tendency to not really want to dissolve in cold. It'll do fine. Really? It'll do just fine. Okay. Um, and we'll, we'll add this. this is, we'll call this video, I Stand Corrected. <laughs> The, the, the key point here, though, is that you want to make a slurry with that. You don't want to add your arrow directly to the hot pan, right, otherwise right, it'll right, be right. clumpy. Right, so always add it outside so it, it's not warm, it's not hot, it's not cold. It's room temperature. At this point, okay, room temperature. And that was how much arrowroot? About uh, one and a half tablespoons okay. or so. Okay, and you're going to add it to... You're not going to add it right away. You're going to add it as after we've reduced this uh, uh, sauce by about half. I'm going to add a little bit more of that uh, that stock to this. So we're going to be close to three quarters of a cup of stock in yeah, here. Show me the amount when you've got left. So yeah, okay, there we go. So um, and, and we don't need to be too fussy about that. About that, we'll taste this. If it needs more pork, we'll add a little more pork. Okay, now the sauce is done. It's been thickened up to a very good consistency. And you can see that, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what you're looking for. And we've already plated up the, uh, the potato and celery root mash. And it looks just like mashed potatoes. Um, we, we just had a quick discussion saying we've got these like darker green plates. And frankly, it would look so much more attractive if it was on darker green plates. But look at that venison. That is beautiful. You always want to serve your venison rare or medium rare. What do you say to people who say, oh, I don't like venison, it tastes gamey. Oh, uh, you probably haven't had it done the right way. <laughs> okay, we have the uh, everything <laughs> plated up, and the venison is... Uh, rare. Uh, venison should always be served rare or medium rare. Uh, medium's really too much. It's, uh, it's a delicate meat. Always serve it rare. If it's not delicate, something's wrong. Exactly. 
It, this is not a, 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 a meat that should be gamey or strong. This is a very delicate. And the sauce, by the way, again, the consistency is absolutely lovely. This is... And we're, we're going to be generous with the sauce because we want to be able to dip the celery root curry into the sauce. <laughs> this is Thanksgiving. This exactly. is an awesome meal. Please try it. We're going to have the entire recipe on Mark's Hedonism on a Dime on Facebook page. Please stop by. Try it out. You are going to absolutely love this. Mm -mm -mm.